Continuing here. Yeah, so God is so much better than we can ever imagine. So we should really spend time striving to understand the heart and mind of God. It's not hard. It's not hidden. He wants us to. Otherwise, we can't imitate, emulate him properly. So it, 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 it is incumbent on all of us to do our level best to really decide to believe in God in the first place. Okay, and there is, I mean, there's just mountains. There's universes of evidence to believe in God, reason, because nothing else makes sense. There's got to be a master designer. There's got to be a creator, a maker. There's got to be. It, to suggest otherwise is suggesting that a car could make itself. It, you know, when we all know it was very, you know, involved, you know, countless engineers and design and mathematics and uh, it, 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 an incredible lot. They think of all the implements involved. I mean, it's just a whole lot goes into it. And the human being and all the flora and fauna is the same way. Okay, I mean, look at your own body. I mean, your eyeballs, even with all the state-of-the-art state uh, video equipment out there, cameras and lenses and all this stuff, the human eyeball is, is, is infinitely more sophisticated. I mean, so there's good grounds to believe in God. So once you establish that, everything starts making sense, that God wants the best for everybody. That makes sense. And even evil people, and it, for his own purposes, because he likes have a good name, a good reputation. He is the famous one. His name is vindicated throughout the universe, and he's going to keep being vindicated. And he does things his way. And when we can accept his way, then we're on the right path. We're going to have eternal life, not in a crap hole. Because, I mean, I understand people that say live and let die, have that out. Look at this. Yeah, I'm just living my life. You know, I just die, put a bullet from it. Who cares? If they, you know, whatever, whatever. It's a pain in the ass. I don't, you know, but they never really try to see through God's eyes that, you know what, you can't really die. The body is not you, okay? The body is what it is. It's like when your body, you tell your body to go get in your car and turn it on and drive down the road, okay? You're no more your car at that point than you are your, you know, you understand that <laughs> it's a vehicle and that's what the body acts as, a vehicle for our essence, so your body becomes the essence controlling the car. You understand how this works? So that's the way we should think about the body. It accounts for nothing that, you know, God can raise up disciples out of the stones like it's written, you know. And if you try to silence these, the stones will cry out. I mean, there's your basis for your free speech. It's a responsibility we have. We've got to preach the good news, the message, Just fight the good fight. Okay, everybody's got to do their little part, and that's all I'm doing here with this series of videos. I mean, I've got, I, I, look, if I didn't feel like I had something to say, I wouldn't bother, okay, because it's something I'm not hearing coming from other people, and if it was, I'd shut the hell up today. Believe me, I, would, I, I can find other things to do with my time, believe me, but this is what I feel compelled to do, and until I don't feel compelled to do it, I'll keep on speaking out. I recommend everybody get everything off your chest. Exercise your free speech, okay, as an obligation, a responsibility. See it like that, and then you, nobody can shut you up, okay? I mean, if you're if somebody is some evil, idiotic, immature, racist, or, you know, whatever their problem is, they'll be exposed, even those people, you know? So let them, let the, I mean, it's like we got to grow some skin. We're Americans. I mean, and we're supposed to be setting a shining light example for freedom and free speech is a part of that. And it's really the only residue left of freedom in America that I see because we are 100% wholly consumed by economic oppression and, and lack of freedom. It's been taken from the people. Okay, their labors have been stolen. This is how they steal it, this national debt. All these jobs that revolve around this problem, folks, okay? But before I get back into that, because I do want to get back into that and, and point out all the, how the jobs now, I mean, God help us if we ever end in desperate poverty. But, you know, God's will for us is good. That It's written that he doesn't delight in the destruction of the wicked, but wishes all to come to him, to change their path, change the road they're on, to come to him and to be saved. Okay, that's it. He wants to save us. Not to keep us in a crap hole forever, but to give us the world that we really want deep down inside. Okay, that one, that world you want, it's not hard to figure out. It's the one you want for your family, your loved ones. And living by the golden rule is all part and parcel of that thinking. 
and it's God's will, so we've got to emulate that. And there's a good justification, a basis to understand that this earth belongs to all of us. It's a thus saith the Lord thing. It's not a political thing. It's not a socialist thing. It's not a capitalist thing. It transcends all that. It supersedes all that nonsense. It's not a political thing. It's not a Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative thing. It's a thus saith the Lord thing. It's written in your scripture. I feel 100% certain to stand before God believing firmly in that, that God wants us to live as a family. And if we'd been doing that in the last 100 years, we'd have been so far, we'd have been all free for a long time. We'd have no use for money at this point in history at all. Full prosperity. 100% people serving each other with a bounce in their steps and joy in their heart and a song on their lips, playing like children on their terms, not beholden anybody, not deferent to anybody. No, we only answer to our own conscience. Do you understand? And when we do, we will feel that need, that compulsion to go out and serve our fellow man because we know that's where we derive the greatest happiness, the greatest satisfaction, the greatest gra gratification, the greatest fulfillment in life, okay? So, you know, Mark Twain was not so far off when, what was it in the story of, was it uh, Huckleberry Finn or Tom Sawyer where, you know, he, he got his friends to pay him for the privilege of getting to paint the fence he had to whitewash, right? So, I, you know, and King Solomon alluded to this when he said, look, he spelled it out the same. He, from his observation, his empirical observations, because uh, he was into this stuff, he studied it, you know, human nature and stuff. And he said, wow, you know what? I mean, this is the way it is. And, that they, you know, the greatest, the happiest ones out there in my uh, court are the, the, the ones that are they're productive. They're not the lazy ones. So... You know, this is something that we have to do is uh, is understand these fundamentals. You know, just like he said, hey, you know what? I mean, blows and disgrace are the lot for the man that, uh, you know, the home wrecker. He was alluding to this guy that would, you know, commit adultery with another man's wife, that he's a real pissant, you know, as we all know, you know. Um, so, but if there's one thing that will make a guy nuts, a jealous man, I mean, it is, uh, you know, you, you mess with his wife. I mean, that's sacred. You're supposed to, as a man, you're supposed to know you don't go there, okay? Uh, unless you're, you know, suicidal, kamikaze pilot. Yet guys do it every day of the week. For some reason, there's some, there's a certain segment of guys I notice with my wife because women are more attractive when they're married. It's just a fact. Just like men are more attractive when they're married. It's just a fact. It's just the way it is. Human nature, the dynamics, we're a fluid creature. So when we're engaged in that relationship and every day we're held to accountability to a partner we got to give love to and, and accept the love from. And, you know, it, it, it's a real check and balance on the individual. Okay. That's why people, one of the reasons people like relationships because it's kind of a way to keep keep them in, you know, walking the straight and narrow path in life and to really be all that they can be. So people, that's why we gravitate. We want to be married. We want to be accountable. But, you know, so they're more attractive. And so, you know, I experienced that with my wife. I mean, she was my princess. And it's like I, I, I would have done every anything in the world for this woman, okay? But there was these guys that, you know, found her very attractive too. And it's not like I didn't understand. I never once had an issue with my wife. I mean, you know, we... Uh, were perfect lovers in my mind, at least, and uh, and she seemed to enjoy me, and I know I enjoyed her, and I never once had a problem. Uh, I gave her what she wanted when she wanted. Let's put it that way. Okay, I'm not going to go into it anymore. But uh, you know, so that wasn't an issue for us. It wasn't in the bedroom. But uh, you know, the other guys found her very attractive too, and you know, part of that was a gift I had given her as her first husband, and. Um, you know, but uh, other guys face the same thing. I mean, uh, you know, I see Max, he's, uh, with, he's got Stacy. I mean, she's an absolutely gorgeous woman and very attractive feminine woman, very intelligent, has a lot of qualities that are very feminine and just very, you know, attractive to a guy. But he's got, he had this other guy on the show, I forget the guy's name, but he was coming on to, you know, making some comments to Max. He's picking up on his wife right there. <laughs> on camera but hey i understand i think he's got good taste but listen as far as actually doing the deed no you know a man is supposed to leave another man's wife alone especially if they've got marital problems you do not get involved but that's the time when a lot of guys take advantage or like you know the weak 
the, at the time when they're vulnerable and stuff like that. So when there's marital problems, that's a time a lot of guys make their way in. There's certain, there's just a certain caliber of men that do that. And I don't like them. I don't like them. And I actually, the only time I acted violent in my life was toward a guy that I'm not going to go into why exactly, but a little more than me just being jealous. Let's put it that way. But you know, largely it was just sheer and utter just, you know, resentment and jealousy and hatred and, you know, how I just, you know, I, I don't understand a man that can do that, that could stoop to that level. The, the lack of self-respect and dignity, I, I, you know, I just don't like it. I'm not that. I'm a man's man. I'm also a woman's man. I mean, I, you know, although I have had a string of lovers in my life, you know, none of them hate me. So, you know, I think they all, they gave themselves to me, so they wanted me and they didn't resent me. It's just... <clears throat> so I'm not only a man's man, but I, I just don't get it. I just don't see how a man can, 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 when there's so many fish in the sea, why you would do that. But I do understand that the women are more attractive when they're married. It's just a fact. It's just the way it is. So I know I've digressed a lot here. But to sum up, look, King Solomon pointed out this business about work. I mean, it is the greatest thing we can do. You know, and look at how, how that's evidence in volunteerism. All the, the cream of the crop, we got these people, the salt of the earth out there, volunteering. But yet, in this paradigm that we, you know, we're accepting, has been shoved down our throats, we know these are the ultimate scabs. Because, I mean, if let's imagine a bunch of volunteers came to your job, in, in your workplace, in the factory, wherever you have whoever you are, whatever you do. And they came in there and said, look, I'll do that job not only for less, so these aren't union busters, okay, scabs. I'll do it for absolutely free. Now, what employer in the world is going to turn down that kind of offer? So here we got the salt of the earth, the cream of the crop, the best people on earth, the volunteers out there. Okay, and I've been one, and I've helped do a lot of stuff volunteer-wise, and, and, and there's nothing more gratifying. It's great, fantastic, I love it. But we do have to see the flip side of that from other people's perspective in this current paradigm that's been shoved down our throats. It's madness. So we're all being rendered, made, into the image and likeness of these madmen at the top. You understand how it seeped into our local cultures, our communities, how they get us divided at each other's throats, believing that's a problem, like just if all these people in my community just believed like me, we'd be able to fix the problem. We'd get rid of these homeless tomorrow. or you know. But really, they're both taking us, all the, the political and all this... The ramblings and uh, the nonsense and 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 trusting in in this belief or that belief socialism or capitalism or democrat republican left or right we're going on the same trajectory and things keep getting worse in our local communities the homelessness the desperate poverty it is absolutely the most important facet that they keep intact they must have desperate poverty continue to keep their agenda going do you understand why do you look at the vast number of jobs out there that revolve around the problem. Do you realize that some 25% of Americans are employed in the debt industrial complex, the financial services industry, to some capacity? Do you understand that? So without debt, they'd all be out of job. Do you understand? That is their business. That is their bread and butter. That is their job to indebt others. Do you understand? Okay, now that's one industry. The debt into that twenty trillion dollars, that is their vested interest in that at twenty-five percent of Americans. If suddenly that debt were to be forgiven and Max Kaiser had Michael um I can't remember his name right now, it was on the show just from uh I guess the Tuesday show. But I was watching that. But this guy, he's great. I mean, you know, he knows we need a jubilee. We need this debt. Forgiveness, basically, is what needs to happen here. But are they going to do it? These people that own the debt, they sure as hell don't want it. That's their, that's their security. That's their freedom. That's their booty. That's what they've stolen from the people. They want to keep it, so they're going to fight tooth and nail. They don't want a depression, currency debasement. They don't want... The, you know, this wealth imbalanced, you know, the ship to turn, the worm to turn on that and things to get even leveled out because people started seeing prosperity, not through you taking from others to give to others, the, the socialist or, you know, I mean, that's not good. That's not egalitarian. 
and it doesn't work. The rich, the, the ones that can comfortably afford to pay the bills of society, they find lawyers to find loopholes and to evade and avoid paying the taxes. So they're not feeling the pain. It's the poor. It's like the analogy of a pinprick to the well-heeled in society and a jab in the arm to the poor. And a lot of times it, it, it he causes the poor to hemorrhage to the point of causing them to be desperately poor and out on the streets. They're out just like a rigged game of Monopoly that's playing for real. That you really die if you lose this game of Monopoly and you just can't pay that $50 in extra rent. You're out there, man, and there's no more. That $50 billion a year that the that the government subsidizes through this the, the taxes paid, this federal this the, 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 this welfare subsidy we call Section 8. Okay, there's no money left in the coffers, and that the evidence is there for the increasing homelessness because this money is supposed to prevent homelessness.